Welcome everyone to episode 356 of Just Joshing. I am your host, Joshua Pentelaresco. I write stuff in Modcast 2. Today, story time returns as I conclude chapter 2 of The Cloud Diver, and I'm really excited about it. Uh, well, one of my favorite things kind of happened I didn't realize in this chapter. It made me laugh my ass off. It took a few takes to get it right, but I did it. It was fun. Uh, chapter 2 does conclude here. We'll find out if Johnny survives. Uh, Adam and his able-bodied assistant Chester, that zombie mobster we have come to know and love. But to also today, we're going to do something... Normally, normally, I would have somebody reading with me this episode, but today we're going to do something a little different. Philip Thomas is based out of um, Portugal. He is an amazing video game designer, and he's sharing with us some music from his video game Into a Dream. So we're going to actually do it in this way. We're going to have his first music here, then I'm going to read chapter two, then we're going to include with his longer piece at the end and call it an episode. Um, but definitely check out the game Into a Dream. Um, he's an amazingly talented dude, and his episode, his interview episode, will appear later this week. All right, let's just go into the first musical impar number, and then from there, we'll continue onward with my story. Think you have what it takes to survive? Then get your ass to Mars! Get Your Ass to Mars is the latest simulation sensation courtesy of Indie Imprint. You are pitted against the hostile nature of Mars. Can you survive and pave the way for future colonists? Or will you succumb to the many pitfalls and obstacles in your way? Get Your Ass to Mars, the Dragon Edition, is available now on PC and Steam. Go to IndieImprint.com for more details. That was the main theme from Into a Dream. Yeah, he has a nice little uh, piece from the game as well. We're going to re reveal a little bit later on. But, Philip, thank you very much for doing this, man. This was awesome. All right. So, how does Johnny get out of his current situation? Let's find out, shall we? The Cloud Diver, Level 1-2, Chapter 5. Feed. Void Life. Void Life. At Void Life. Void life verified. At Chris Mars, at Craig DeLouis. 
We have received your call. Our teams are en route to deal with cert sightings. At Veratus123. We have contacted the authorities. Please cease! Well, this blows. DBY struggled with the blue energy that came from the cane. I looked at the front door, which is now slammed shut. Chester stared down. I'd seen people look at me like this in my high school days. That kind of malice in those dim eyes usually ended with fists in my face. I did not look for forward to Chester's fist in my face, as I liked my face as it was. Adam, for his part, was back on his headset, not to contact an employer per se, at least not yet. Rather, he was trying to finish the conversation he started right when I arrived. How do you expect to feed a pony, honey? He doesn't grow on trees. His little girl obviously really wanted that pony and was doing her best to change his mind. One way or the other, the conversation was going to come to an end, and once that was done, Adam was going to contact whoever his employer was. And then, I didn't want to think about then. Diamonds weren't illegal, exactly. They were agrarian when it came to law. Some professions used them. Under sea cities were relied on them for survival. Outside of the Great Reef, daemons weren't considered alive. They weren't biological, and as such, they were tools at best. Undesirable was a general consensus. If they didn't have to be tolerated, they wouldn't be. What saved Stevie White from harm right now was that he possessed the file Gunblade had given me. Adam wouldn't dare to leave them until the file was found and extracted. I marveled at the cane Adam had used. There had to be some kind of Sawyer apparatus at the base of the crystal. Sawyer apparatuses were designed to store consciousness and had a number of practical uses in today's time. It was a piece of diving equipment where its processor used to allow exploration of the virtual realm. It could also be used to trap a daemon. I had to disrupt it. Can you disappear? They saw me when I disappeared, Stevie Y despaired. He glanced at Chester and shuddered. That one is barely human anymore. A guttural growl from Chester answered Stevie Y, who shuddered that much more. <laughs> he looks mostly human to me, I answered. I'm a computer that looks like a gnome. You, of all people, should know appearances can be deceiving. Fair point. I can still hear you, Adam said in his sing-song voice. What's that, honey? Nope, just my appointment. We're nearly done here. So how do we avoid another Mr. Fluffy incident? I watched DBY struggle even harder against the indigo life to no avail. Panic was apparent in his eyes and I didn't like it. I didn't care what anyone thought about him. Stevie Y was my creation. I didn't see a mirror machine in front of me. I saw a being in its own right. Sure, he liked the spam bots a little more than he should for his own good, but nobody's perfect. What could I do to save him? And even if I could save Stevie Y, where could he go that they wouldn't find him? An idea formed in my head. It was desperate, but in our predicament, desperate was all I had. Could you go there? I asked. Stevie Y's panic calm as he looked at me with confusion. What do you mean, there? Brains? So you promised to feed the pony every morning and evening? I did my best to mimic the image of the library, which involved me charading like a jolly giant fist for a second. Both Chester and Stevie Y actually tilted their heads at my ability to appear boneless and blob-like on the ground. Chester shuddered and muttered another brains to himself. Hearing brains managed to click something in Stevie Y's mind, he nodded. I could find my way back in there, he said. I just need to get out of here. There was an unmentioned but in his statement, and I didn't need him to say it to confirm what it was. Once in the library, Stevie Y wouldn't be able to just leave. They'd be looking for him. Not to mention the fact that the library was an ancient system without any real access. Another 13th floor would have to appear, for, and then... What would I do then? Who was going to make that kind of path for me? How the hell was I even going to escape these two? No good answers were coming to me. But he'd be safe. No one would be able to extract them or to flush them out of the system. Billions of foreign programs were running wild in there. It would be a good place for him to disappear. I'd do right by him, at least. I'm gonna miss you, I said. Me too. Stevie Boy actually managed to sniffle. Yeah. I didn't like my chances of getting out of here either. But I had to try. I took.
took a deep breath. I talked a big game, but this next step was the hardest. If I did this, there would be no turning back. I'd have to accept Bencer as my only real constant. Starting with the outside world beyond my window. Just high up was I again? I looked at the Dorchester Bard. I had no idea what I was going to do once I was outside this room. It had been a long time since I got outside. The outside, from what I remembered, was dangerous. But right now, so was the inside. I rushed at him, who was deep in conversation with his daughter, and him with the stomach with my shoulder. Adam toppled as the cane fell, and the light flickered, and I heard the crunch of crystal meeting floor. The blue light surrounding Stevie Y vanished. Chester roared in action and charged at me. Stevie Y wasted no time vanishing himself in all the commotion. I just had to give him a couple seconds. I looked at my gam console and I wanted to cry. I really did enjoy video games. New White Sands City had been a fantastic diversion. I would never get another chance to play it again. I grabbed my video game system and chucked it right at the window. The glass shattered and the breeze whooshed at us. I knew right then and there I was crazy. Brains! The human robotic sound that came out of Chester fueled my fear to new heights. I was outside the winter alone in a heartbeat, ignoring the wind and my face as it skirted along the skyline, hugging the edge of the wall. Once I was out there, all the adrenaline washed away and sheer panic took its place. Just the idea I was testing the gravity features inside the tower on the 51st floor. Now I was facing real physics full in the face. I froze. It's a small miracle I just didn't fall right here, looking at the night sky. Okay, honey. Daddy has to get back to work. I heard Adam inside my apartment. A different fear came over me as my heart pounded and thought what he would do to me. I flew onward and my legs after nervous he finished his conversation. I love you. We'll talk about the tomorrow. Pony tomorrow? Don't stay up to wait. Brains? I think you can retrieve him, Chester. Brains. I started to reel myself to move. I had no idea how I was going to survive from here. The Cloud Diver. Level 1 2. Chapter 6. Feed. Void Life. Void Life. At Void Life. At Void Life Verified. Contrary to the rumors being reported, there is no Ouroboros Cartel. There is a hashtag Ouroboros Service, however. At Freeman. Our QA with a G Bender CEO is next. Brains. I moved far too slowly along the skyline, amazed the legends could fit a person. Doing my best not to look down, I slithered across the wall and hugged it as tight as possible. The fall would be 78 stories and very final and I could do without that reminder. In fact, I saw a pigeon in flight look up to me in shock before smacking itself against one of the windows. Chester was still watching me from the window, deciding whether or not to come after me. Adam popped up just behind Chester, examining the now broken window and my progress at getting away. I see my talk on safety and security was a waste, Adam sighed. You were going to kill me, I managed to scream back at him. Probably not, Adam answered. I wasn't comforted. He glanced at Chester and nodded. I took that as encouragement to move faster. An angry metallic noise ushered in Chester's silhouette on the side of the building. The shade transformed from something mostly human into something resembling an arachnid. Stevie where I had been right, human was not the word to describe Chester anymore. I heard metal crunch on concrete and adrenaline poured into my heart at breakneck speed. Chester skittered behind me as I did my best to keep ahead. My room was getting farther and farther in the distance. Slow steps and carefulness dissipated in the euphoria of being so much in the clouds. I nearly fell out the building with a smile on my face before my adrenaline kicked me back into reality. The monster still followed. He still has blonde hair, only now it was all over his body. Liquid mercury oozed from his skull, giving Chester a more alien, robotic presence. The extra limbs were long and metallic, nearly identical to the webbing spiders used. Somehow... I guess they were much stronger than any web I'd ever seen. He was coming, and there was no way I was fast enough to escape. This was it. The adventure was over. I was going to be captured by the robo-zombie spider thingy with no vocabulary. I doubt I would be walking anywhere anytime soon, if at all. At least TVY was safe. It was a small comfort. I felt one of Chester's spider-like limbs caress my cheek. It felt robotic and supple. I was afraid. 
I heard the sudden sound of gunfire and a roar as green and silver ooze sprayed the building. Chester toppled down onto the ground below, and I let out a sigh of relief. For just a second, I didn't care who saved me. Somehow, I was still alive. I looked up and Gunblade stared back at me. Instead of her trusty Gunblade, she held a pistol, and it was pointed at me. She didn't quite have the same perfect appearance she had in the library. Bumps and bruises decorated her arms, and her rose-colored hair was less bright. But I could tell it was her. We need to go now, brains! I didn't want to know how he survived that fall. If that didn't stop him, what would? The faraway sound seemed more animal than human. I needed no more motivation. I reached my hand up. She took it. This episode of Just Joshing is sponsored by Indie Imprint. Indie Imprint supports creators by creators. Whether you are writing a book or creating a video game, Indie Imprint works with its clients to produce, edit, and present their projects to the world. For more information, check out their website at www.indieimprint.com. And that is chapter two. That's right. Gunblade is alive. How did she survive? Do I answer that this time? Well, maybe. But first, they gotta escape void life. And that, I promise, is quite a ride. <sighs> so, um, this has been a heck of an experiment so far. I kind of want to thank everybody for being a part of this. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. I've learned a lot doing this. I hope you guys have noticed the difference. Um, I've noticed it. I almost seem like I know what I'm doing now. Kind of, sort of. Well, maybe not really. But I'm, I'm getting better at it for sure. Anyway, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back to Philip here. Philip has another piece called Henry Henry's Score. And it's a lot longer. And I think it's really, really cool that he uh, shared this music from the game. So definitely, definitely uh, lay, take a listen to this and uh, pick up Into a Dream on Steam if you got some extra money right now because it's a great game. All right, on to the music.
Thanks, Philip. That this was amazing and incredible, and I'm glad you let me do this. So, guys, definitely check out the game Into a Dream. The music's great, so is the game. It's a great look at depression in a very, very creative way. And like I said, we talk more about that this week as he does show up on sh the show. He's episode 358. Bobby Nash is next. The next interview. So my last two readers, uh, or readers slash performers. Uh, are actually going to be featured on the show as proper interviews because I think they're both amazing people and uh, you definitely need to get to meet them. Well, that is another story time. Just about done. A couple of announcements. My second loser ran right out. Um, I did that uh, yesterday. Uh, if you guys like how hear the story of how I was nearly bribed by mashed potatoes, you definitely want to check out the newsletter. I also did my first little giveaway um, on the newsletter. Uh, you know, just by answering the question I had, like my name in my newsletter is Let's Get Dangerous. And the question I had for my subscribers is why would I call this Let's Get Dangerous? And if anyone knows me, they know the answer to this question. But if they don't, that's fine. There's a bonus question too where I give some really cool bonus swag. But for the moment, I have one winner and I need some more. So guys, if you want to actually be part of the newsletter, definitely uh, there's a link that's going to be in the podcast description. Click on it, sign up. Um, it's a growing list. It's amazing. Some I like how quickly it's grown. I already have more people on this list than I had it in my last newsletter, which I think is mind boggling to me. Uh, the cloud divers be is available May 1st. I'm just waiting to hear from a couple things, but when I hear that, it'll be great. Um, ne not ne this week, but the week after I'm hosting another creative some quarantine. If you want to hear me read from the cloud diver again, I'll be doing it. I'll be doing something I haven't done yet. Um, I'm secretly hoping that the I find myself one more romance writer. If so, if you are listening to this and you d do a romance um, piece, I would love to hit one more. I have a uh, one romance author already kind of read, and I have another one coming up. I want to do like occasionally like genre themed episodes, and I, I do feel like romance does get a lot underrepresented, underrespected. Um, it takes a lot of skill to write, you know, write that kind of thing, and uh, a lot of people do it. Um, but my reading list for next for next month is looking pretty solid. Danica Stone opens things up next week. The romance genre episode will happen at some point. That's going to happen. Uh, I'll name the two authors when they're both they're both aligned. Uh, Crystal Wallace has finished, just handed me in hers, which is so cool. Um, but I got Stacy Overby as well. So that's that's month two of the story time, which I think is really really loaded. Um, and more names are coming. Uh, I cannot wait till we get to June. Uh, I got some big names there, and I got some more names. I'm asking all the time. It, it's been a really, really cool experience to do this. So thanks, guys. Uh, is there anything else right now? That's it for now, I think I can talk about. So anyways, guys, I'll do it for this episode of Just Joshing. If you want to support the podcast, you can do so in a number of different ways. Uh, subscribe to the podcast. I'm on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, Stitcher. Um, definitely check it out. Um, my YouTube channel is Joshua Pentelaresco. My past interviews are all there, so definitely check those out. Uh, my older books, The Watcher's Stone Dance One and God, are currently available as ebooks at miraclepublishing.com. Check out their Shopify store. You will be very impressed with what they're doing, I promise. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. My Twitter and Instagram is at jpentelaresco. My newsletter is just come out. It's called Let's Get Dangerous. If you want to subscribe, there's giveaways, video game stuff, lots of cool things in there. Definitely, definitely check it out. Um, let's think. What else am I missing here? The Cloud Diver, May 1st. More to come this week. Let's do it, I think. My Twitter and Instagram is jpentelaresco. Stay inspired. Stay joyful in this time. And I'll see you guys in story time next week. But I'll see you with the podcast on Tuesday. Josh. Josh. The Cloud Diver, level 2-2. Two, two. Fuck. The Cloud Diver, chapter. <sighs> Both Chester and Steve White actually tilted their heads at my apparently to be a boneless and blah blah on the ground. <laughs> Shit, the... <laughs> Chester Stern. That is that. I can't remember. I forgot. I forgot. I wrote.